Growing up is a tough thing for everybody. You go through a variety of emotions. Happiness, embarrassment, anger. It's enough to cause you to be turning red, which is also a Disney Plus exclusive from Disney and Pixar and is directed by Domi Shu, who directed Bao, that was an animated short, and she also wrote it. And also Julia Cho, who wrote a few episodes of the TV series The Fringe, and Sarah Stretcher, but I barely know her. I think it's actually Stryker, but I'm sticking with that joke. She wrote a few episodes of Daredevil and The Wilds. I don't know what The Wilds is. Maybe it's No Church in The Wilds. Wait, no, let's not reference that song. This is a Pixar Disney animated movie, as I talked about. It did drop on Disney+, Plus, and basically Turning Red is just a very obvious allegory for you know, for the change, you know, for changes that a woman goes through as she becomes, you know, a woman, you know, whether it hits at 11 years old, 13 years old, whether it hits way, way late in life, whether it hits at 60, wait, that's another change of life. This is about Mei Mei or Mei Lin, uh, voiced by Rosalind Chang or Rosalie Chang. I apologize if I mispronounce any of these names. Sandra Oh plays her mother Ming. And this basically is about a mother and daughter that work at a uh, Korean temple in Toronto. And you don't find out it's in Toronto for a while. So that was a bit of a shock. I was like, okay, Canadian city. One of the biggest Canadian cities, uh, well, in Canada. Can't be in the world because Canada's only confined to Canada. Enough geography lessons. This has the mother and daughter and also the father working at this place and honoring their ancestry and basically just trying to make ends meet. They have a nice house, and they have a good family dynamic. And May is a 13-year-old girl that is basically <clears throat> perfect. She's, you know, she, she's a great, great daughter. She gets great grades in school. She has a few friends um, that are a variety of people. One's, like, very, very jokey and, you know, punchy. One's very somber, and then one's very nerdy. But they're all kind of nerdy. Because they all get along really goddamn well. And a lot of other people are really annoyed by Mei Mei's behavior because she's so goddamn perfect. She's so annoying. You know, all these voices and everything. And then we find out that, well, it turns out Mei Mei's family has a bit of a secret. And if you have not seen the poster and you have not seen the trailer, this is going to be a bit of a precursor to the spoiler. And the spoiler section will come up in a bit. The whole Turning Red thing involves a an ancestry where... And where their their founder, I guess, Sun Yi, uh, not Sun Yi Days, as it were, not that Sun Yi, by the way, not the one that Woody Allen got with. This one, um, she years and years and years and years and years ago, while there was a great war going on, made a deal with the gods to basically protect her family, protect her village, and she got the powers of a red panda. She could just turn to a red panda. So that's why the turning red thing happens, because otherwise if she turned into a black panda or turned into a koala, it would be very, very weird turn koala. You don't want to turn into a koala. Read up on koalas. They're disgusting creatures. Red pandas, however, are pretty fucking adorable and really hard to see at the zoo. So it turns out that this woman made this deal and everything, and also there is this, <clears throat> so there's a steep hit, or this, this whole family, it's a deep history of being a red panda, but also channeling that and finding out that you don't, that you can just be you and everything, but keep the, keep your emotions in check. And Mei Mei finds this out when one day she just suddenly, you know, gets excited and everything and turns into a red panda. She doesn't know what the hell is going on here. And then her mother's like, oh, you're going through this change or whatever. You're becoming a woman. So she gets all this stuff and this, these feminine products and everything. The turning red thing's an allegory for uh, a woman getting her first period in case they didn't hit you over the head enough with that. And from there, we get a bunch of humor with the friends finding out and other people finding out. And maybe and her friends wanting to go to a concert, a boy band that is far, far, far less toxic of a fan base than BTS pretty certain I'm probably going to get absolutely reviled and killed in the comments for saying that, but seriously, the fandoms are out of control, and these girls want to go to that concert, including Mamie, but she's the perfect daughter, and she can't go, because her mother wants her to basically contain her, contain her <clears throat> red panda nature, as it were, but Mamie also wants to do what she wants to do, as any kid would want to do as they grow up. They don't just want to honor their parents' dreams, they want to honor their family, but they don't want to not honor themselves. That's one of the opening lines. 
And from there, we have a typical Pixar Disney movie with a lot of heart. This... I would argue that while this is not as beautifully done as Encanto, it is one of Disney and Pixar's best efforts in a while. There's a lot of good emotion here. This is better than Luca, in my personal opinion. Even though I like Luca, I found Luca to be on the, a bit uneven. The, my only critique is the boy band music. I don't mind boy band music. I don't mind pop music, but that stuff's kind of generic. That's really just a backdrop for the fact that, oh, these girls, they want to go to this concert. They want to raise the money, but the tickets are like $200 each. It's also in the Toronto Sky Dome, so apparently the Toronto Sky Dome can't draw big crowds because $200 to get that close on the floor, man, the Sky Dome must be really struggling. Of course, they've been struggling ever since <coughs> events like, you know, WrestleMania 6 and WrestleMania 18 are no longer around because even though this does take place in the past, so we find out that, in, that at some point in 2002, WrestleMania 18 could have taken place. Maybe that's why they had to rebuild the goddamn thing, because of something that happens later. Or maybe not. You'll have to find out in the spoilers. So yeah, it's just an allegory for a woman going through that change, or a young girl going through that change of life, and everything in the whole turning red. You get excited, you get anger, you get embarrassment, you have all these emotions, you have a weird smell on you and everything. Again, they hit you over the head with it. It's got a lot of heart. It's got, it actually can make you tear up a bit. Yes, me, of all people, teared up a bit. Didn't flat out cry like I did while watching 18 Presents, which is another movie you should check out that's on Netflix, but this is about Disney animated movies, and it's really, really fucking terrific. One thing I do want to critique is the critique, so I'm critiquing a critique, of how people were like, why do the characters look like this? It's weird drawings and everything. What the hell is going on? You gotta try new things, and Pixar, while they haven't uh, bat a thousand... I would argue that the Cars movies are really, really fucking shit, in my personal opinion, and The Incredibles, and this is going to cause me a whole lot of, <laughs> or give me a whole lot of hate. I thought The Incredibles were just okay. I didn't think they were great. I thought they were just okay. But I get why some people like them. But Pixar does, more often than not, knock it out of the park. And the fact that Disney is gaining so much steam with their Disney Plus streaming service, they can just put movies out like this, and they'll still make a lot of money back. And they did that with Soul. Soul was really fucking terrific, if you haven't seen that. Luca was pretty good, as I said. But this just has a nice family dynamic to it. And also, it's about whether Mei Mei wants to just continue to be, you know, mommy's little girl, mommy's favorite. Or she wants to explore while honoring her family, wants to do more stuff with her life. And from there, we get <clears throat> some good stuff. We get... The typical thing of a girl trying to hide her, you know, stuff, or, you know, all this stuff that she's going through, being a giant red panda, you know, that's gonna get some attention, obviously, from a lot of young people, and a lot of young girls are gonna be like, oh, it's so adorable, even one of her friends at one point when they, so her friends see her like that, and one, and one of her friends is like, oh, you're so fluffy, I don't know why that amused me, I don't know why it amused me so much, but there was some good voice acting and some really, really stellar animation in this as you would expect with a disney pixar movie is it perfect no is it typical yes but <clears throat> are there way way more positive the positives are all the way up here and the negatives like i said maybe the music i mean the music's about it and even that is just minor like you can kind of tune that shit out even though the the four town and at one point the mother says why do they call them four town if there's five of them these are important questions when it comes to pop music but overall, the movie is really, really fucking terrific. It does cause a wide range of emotions. And if, if you know, mothers watch this with their daughters, they can get an idea of maybe, hey, this is how we should deal with some stuff. Reflect on how you handled, you know, going through that particular change <coughs> and becoming a woman. And maybe pass it on to your daughter. Don't be a bitch. Don't be a bitch, bitchy. That's basically what I could just, uh, you know, summarize it. Can't put that in the title. That would get me in a whole lot of trouble. And I could say, don't be a C, but I can't say that word because otherwise I'll get in trouble, even though it's one of my favorite words. So I have to say it off camera and on social media. Good thing I have friends that don't mind me saying that word. But the mother wants her to contain this uh, issue and a bunch of other stuff. <laughs> Typical of Pixar Disney, but with a lot of heart and a lot of really good animation and it's expedient. It's done in like 88 minutes. It's an hour and 47 minute runtime, and like the credits go for about 8 to 10 minutes and then the last few minutes just so you know are all the various dubs that have happened like how Netflix does that for their originals and various you know other streaming services do that. 
So overall, it's really, really good. Really, really good stuff. I really enjoyed it. It is, again, expedient and quick, and it does have a very good emotional thing. It also ties into recognizing ancestry using <clears throat> some good cultural stuff and showing that you can just be who you are and you can still be good to your family and you can be true to yourself. So I'd say that's a pretty damn good movie, and it's also, again, pretty quick. So... I'm going to get into spoilers here in a little bit, so absolutely watch if you got Disney+. Plus. But three, two, one, spoilers. Spoilers will not take very long. Basically, Mei Mei finds out about this red panda stuff. <coughs> is trying to hide it from her mom. Her mom eventually finds it. And it turns out that since, obviously, it goes back to Sun Yi. Sun Yi days, as it were. God damn you, Shawn Michaels. Um, he, or she, rather. She has a good relationship with her dad, but her dad's kind of meek and a little bit quiet and everything, and it's just a good dad. The mother says, please keep this uh, hidden. She also doesn't have a good relationship with her grandmother. We find out a little bit later the reason why is because the mother, Ming, unleashed her panda and ended up attacking her mother. Didn't mean to, <laughs> felt terrible, and had to go through this ritual where you contain the panda spirit in like a necklace or something, like, you know, a, a, an amulet, a brooch, whatever it is. And you keep that stuff hidden, and that way you don't let it out. Of course, if you break that, then the panda spirit comes out. And if it's good, you're fine. If it's evil, oh boy. And we do get some good versus evil stuff and trying to contain your emotions and all that. And the friend dynamic I thought was really good because it's all about growing up and <laughs> being good to your friends. That does get a little bit jarring because sometimes, you know, one thing I think this movie hits on is when they go to the concert and they eventually do go to the concert, they have may may play the, you know, play up the panda thing and they get the money and raise the money for the concert tickets and that's some good stuff there. But then she says, you know, we had that concert. It was a great concert. The concert, by the way, kind of goes tits up because the ritual, may may says, no, I don't want to do this ritual. She goes away from the whole thing this beautiful forest shot by the way this bamboo forest shot and the mother gets pissed and when she leaves and goes to the concert after kind of blowing her friends off before to do this ritual and she has a bond with her friends the mother's amulet breaks and the panda gets released and oh boy the mother's anger because you never want to piss off your mother no why are amulets wait that's not how that line works she goes to the sky dome and the band gets put in jeopardy and then we have to get a mother-daughter, uh, heart-to-heart, so to speak, with maybe kind of headbutting her mother, turning it, because she's a small red panda. Her mother's a great big red panda, where the dad actually talked about that earlier and said, yeah, she unleashed it, and it was a little bit scary. And then there's this, they try to do the ritual there using a chalk line <coughs> from the concert thing, I guess, apparently, since it's the Sky Dome and the Blue Jays play there. They decide, hey, we're just going to get this chalk line thing that they just happened to find. Everybody has scattered from the goddamn uh, thing. And they do the ritual, but all the, the grandmother and the aunts, you know, that are there, they came to perform the ritual because, again, you know, Ming doesn't have the best relationship with her grandmother. They manage to pull her in there, and they manage to do this ritual where they all go up, and they go into that bamboo forest, and she walks with her mother, and this is good. This is where it got me. She's walking with her mother. Her mother's like, oh, I hurt my mother. I didn't mean to. It's kind of stuff because her grandmother had a scar right there. And talked to her, and the aunts and <coughs> grandmother say, hey, we're going to contain our panda spirit. The mother does the same, but maybe I said, I can't. I can't. I've had too much fun with it. I can't do that. And eventually she does. She or doesn't contain it. She goes off and decides she's just going to embrace who she is. And that was some pretty good stuff. And then we find out that she uses those panda powers to help raise money. You know, help keep the temple open, the temple shop open. And also raise money to repair the Sky Dome. They're going to need about $50 million. Evidently in 2002, because it was called Panda Apocalypse 2002. Wait, I got it. Hogan versus Rock didn't bring the Sky Dome down. This brought the Sky Dome down. And what ended up happening is, um, this is anybody that is not a wrestling fan has no fucking idea what I'm goddamn talking about right now. And there is money, and it's all about being who you are. But the thing about the friends is <laughs> you hang out with your friends, and you're all young and happy and fancy free and stuff like that. And then 
you don't realize when maybe the last time you played with your friends would be. And that's some pretty good stuff. That's pretty jarring. That's a bit jarring for children, but it was really, really good. It's getting an A+, plus because it was fucking terrific, and it's absolutely worth checking out. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rutland. I'll see you soon.